So I hope you guys have your teacups. It's tea time. What's up, guys? It's Jade. So, like, I have a story time for y'all today, but can I just break out to the point? I injured my foot. I stepped on glass, and so, like, this is the best I could do. But, like, what's up, guys? It's your girl, Jade. So, I have a story time for you guys today. Um, you know, for a long time, I was trying to debate, do I really want to do this? Do I really want to make this video? And for the longest time, I kept telling myself, no, you know, that would stir up drama, that'd be a lot of mess, that'd be a lot of stuff. But, you know, I always wanted to get my side of the story out about what happened get out all the truth, all the tea, all the everything, you know, because I feel like at least all of it should be out there, you know, so I just feel like it was time, it's been a few months, so it's about time that this came out, you know, whatever, so uh, make sure you guys have your coffee, tea, whatever you need, because there's going to be a lot of it spilt, and snacks, because this is going to be a kind of long video, hopefully I don't get long-winded, we'll see, so that if you are ready, let's begin. So guys, this is the story about how me and my ex broke up. So I really wasn't sure if I was going to do a story time video based on this, but like I said, after a long, long, long time of thinking, it finally came to play. And I'm not going to say his name, although most people know who he is. But for those who don't, I'm not going to say his name because I don't want you guys going and backlashing him and whatever. I just want to set the record straight and get my feelings out there and stuff because this has been building on me for so long and you know it's really hard to let something or someone go when you've grown so attached you know now this guy was amazing he was sweet he was caring but he had another side to him that I didn't really like per se and we would always get into arguments about that fact. And honestly, I thought with, you know, everything that happened between me and him that, you know, we could try to move past this hard time or whatever and be friends. I hoped, I prayed that we could be friends, but it just every time that happened it would just get worse and worse and mean and cranky and we'd be so vile to each other and i didn't really like that and then when family members got involved that just made it worse so me and this guy we dated for 11 months pretty much and now i'm not going to say that it was completely innocent on both sides but there was this one point that when you know you've taken it too far, you know you've taken it too far. So there was this point where we decided, you know, we would hang out with people. I got to meet his friends, stuff like that. And um, I will say that one of me and his one of his friends got a little too close. Not like that, but like we were too, we were kind of friendly. There was some, you know, we were just really, really friendly with each other. And I'm a very friendly person anyway, but I guess, you know, things can't be helped. So, what ended up happening was he didn't want me hanging around his friends anymore. Because of the fact that one of me and his friends were really close and we got a lot closer than he liked, I guess. 
because of the fact that we were so close and we would talk to each other all the time, he felt that it was just not okay. And that by doing that, by getting us separated, was going to make it better, but I just felt like he was trying to control my life and I didn't like the fact that he was trying to control who out of his friends I hung out with. And so it really upset me a lot. Moving on, that happened, we got into an argument about it, and things went on and we just decided, you know what, whatever. That was one of the times where I thought me and him were actually going to break up over that because I thought it was really stupid how we were arguing over who I could and could not hang out with. I thought it was very just, no, you know, like, you don't want me hanging out with this person because me and this person get along very well and that we're, we talk to each other a lot, yes, and the person that I'm talking, that your, your friend is a guy, yeah, okay, I could see you being protective, whatever, whatever. But the point where you are telling me that you don't want me coming over to see him with you, you don't want me to talk to him at all, you're telling him to block me because you don't want him speaking to me, that's a little over the top, just a bit, you know? But that's not even the craziest part. So, moving on, we get to a part where I believe three, four months in, and we decide we want to do, um, you know, we just want to spice up our relationship, like, you know, just try new things, try different things, whatever, whatever. He didn't like that. He wanted us to stay the same, pretty much. Didn't want us to try any new things, didn't want us to try, like, I would try to get us to go you know, do more fun stuff, but he would always want to go do the same thing, like, I would, like, the only, pretty much the only big things we ever did was, like, go to Six Flags once for Fright Fest, and, um, we went out to dinner, but, like, we went to, like, out, I think Outback was one of the main places we went. But, like, I'm not saying it's bad to, like, help pay for the meal or you pay. But if you're paying all the time, that should be a... That... that I'm not going to say it's a bad thing, but I'm not going to say it's a good thing either. You should be paying all the time. And that was the problem I was having. Lending money and not getting it back was another issue that we were having also, but I digress. Mainly, we were having a lot of problems, you know, trying out new things because every time I wanted to do something new, he didn't want to do it, but then he would have conversations with people about having new things, which I later found out about, that did not make me happy because he would be telling people, oh, you know, I want to try something with you, da da da. But then when I wanted to try those things, he would say no. So it was like kind of contradictory, you know. And to make matters worse, you know, fast forwarding, we kept getting to arguments about stuff like this for months. Months. And like one time on my birthday, I was upset because things were falling apart, plans were being canceled. Not this past birthday where I turned 20, the one where I turned 19. But um, things were going haywire, people were canceling, people weren't showing up. And one of his guy friends, the one he didn't want me getting close to, tried to comfort me. You know, he was trying to talk to me, calm me down, whatever. Well, my boyfriend at the time did not like that. He didn't like that his friend was trying to comfort me and make me feel better. And so he literally tried to shove him out of the way. And when his other friend came with us to the mall, he literally pushed him out the way when I tripped and fell on the floor. He pushed his friend out of the way and was like, no, she's my girlfriend. I'll handle it. I'll help her up. And at first I thought, you know, okay, maybe he's being protective. But at the same time, I was like, he didn't need to be all aggressive like that. You know, it was kind of like, 
it was hard to explain, but it was like strange. She was acting very, very aggressive towards me, you know? Like pro very protective, but like super protective. And it was like really, really just over the top. Moving on, so then later on we get past this part and a few months goes by and things are getting worse. And this is where all the drama starts to set in, so be prepared for this. So, months go by, you know, we're, we haven't officially broken up yet, but we're going on and off again, on and off again. So, a thing had happened between us, at, like, in the third, fourth month, where we were like, okay, we might need a break from each other. And for me, I'm a very... I like my personal space. I really do. So like, I'm that weird type of person. Like, I don't mind. I love being with you, hanging out with you. I don't mind. I'm kind of clingy, but at the same time, I want personal space. Like, my ex-boyfriend would come over all the time. And I mean all the time. He would come at like 3 in the afternoon, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, whatever. But he would stay until like 9, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. And my parents would have to come out there or br call me to their room to be like, hey, you need to tell him that he needs to go home. And he would even tell me sometimes. He'd be like, look, you know, I don't really want to go home. I don't stay here with you. I'm like, yeah, but you need to go home. Like, you have your own family at home that you need to be with. And I understand that you love me and you care for me, but still, that's a little obsessively clingy. Like, you want to be around me all the time. Like, when we would go to his church to visit, if people are trying to come up and talk to me, especially other girls or guys, he would get really obsessive. Like, he wouldn't want nobody talking to me. He wouldn't want nobody coming near me. He wouldn't want nobody, like associating with me or he'd be like right up behind me underneath me so that when people talk to me they couldn't even have conversations about whatever because he would be right up under me so at this point there was a lot going on and then even worse so I started seeing some of my friends less and less because all my time would be surrounded by him I'd be with him almost all the time everywhere going out places spending all this money going places going here going there and then most of the time he'd be like wanting to come to my house and I didn't have a problem with it but my parents were getting aggravated by it because they'd be like wanting to spend some time with me and they couldn't or they'd want some peace in their house but they can't because he's all that he's there all the time and so you know I would try to lightly tell him like hey Maybe we can hang out another weekend, or maybe we can hang out, you know, another time. But he would be like, okay. And then he'd call me the next day and be like, okay, so let's go out somewhere. Or he'd call me two days later and be like, yeah, let's go out somewhere. Did you not understand what I meant by personal space? Or you gotta get away? Or me come to myself? Like, did, did you not understand what I meant? Like, I, I thought we made this clear. I, I thought we had an understanding here. So, clearly we didn't. So, moving on, like, it just kept being like that for like months. And then, you know, then some things started happening. He got more distant. And, you know, he got like distant and he would always apologize even if he wasn't wrong he would apologize all the time and I never understood that like even if you're not wrong you don't have to apologize like if I'm in the wrong I'm in the wrong but don't apologize for every little thing and always say it's your fault and then the other thing that used to irritate me I know depression and suicide is a big thing but do not make yourself a victim by saying all that stuff aloud, like, I suffer with it a little bit too, a little bit of depression from time to time, like, 
sometimes I go through my little depression spells. I used to have it a lot in middle school and it went away in high school because, you know, I had a lot of friends who were trying to help me and get me through it. But then it, you know, it comes back from time to time when I'm going through a lot of stress. But don't use it to your advantage to make people, like, feel bad for you and stuff. Like, if you're not, like, I can understand if somebody's, like, really going through something versus you're using it to make somebody feel guilty or you're using it to make somebody, like, really listen to you and feel bad so that they'll do whatever you want. Don't do that. Please don't. Because he used to do that a lot. Like, he would, like, I would tell him, like, I need my personal space. I want to break from you for a little bit so I can focus on me, focus on things for me, like, focus on school or whatnot because I was going to school at the time. And, like, I was doing really bad in school, honest to God. I was doing horrible because most of my time I couldn't study because I was spending time with him. And he would tell me he wants me to focus on school, but then he would invite me out somewhere. That don't really work. <laughs> so, like, it, it was very difficult. You know, it was very frustrating. So, every time I would try to get up, take a break from him, he would cry or he would be really emotional or he would be really upset and be like well you know I don't want you to take a break from me I feel like you're trying to break up with me and I'm like that's not true I'm not trying to break up with you I just need some space from you for a little bit like I just need to focus on me for a little bit and then we can hang out and do whatever but let me just focus on me for a little while you know like and I don't think he ever understood that and he would always say okay I understand but then he would get frustrated and mad and go rant to other people about it you know he would go rant to my friends he would be texting and calling my friends nagging them he would be texting his friend who they're not friends anymore but he would be texting him calling him telling him to call me and tell me to talk to him and his friend would be like no I'm not going to talk to her for you you need to be a man about it and talk to your girlfriend talk to her or give her the space she needs then when she's ready she'll talk to you but he would never listen and so it would just be rough it was rough it was, it was crazy and it only got worse honestly like we had a good relationship but then a lot of stuff happened and it just ugh, it just and part of it was because he was very stubborn on not wanting to do new things, but even more so, he would get frustrated and put the blame out without taking any responsibility for himself. And then he would say later on, I took responsibility, but then he would go right back to blaming me again. So it's like, you can't contradict what you're doing. You're doing it both ways. You can't have it both ways. And the frustrating thing was like, Every time I would try to have a break, he wouldn't give it to me. Or he'd give it to me, but then like three days later or a week later, he'd be like, okay, so are we done with our break now? Can we hang out again? Can we talk again? Da, da, da. I'm like, no. Like, a break doesn't last. A break, whoever wants the break will let you know when the break is done. You can't just decide, oh, the break is over, whatever. You, you, you can't do that. that that's not how it works point being that was a major problem and so a few months go by I'm getting ready to go on a cruise to uh, I was going to Belize and a few other New Mexico and somewhere else I was going to some islands and whatever for a cruise on a Norwegian cruise ship so I wasn't going to have any ability to call text whatever because I was going to be on the cruise and it costs a lot to call and text when you're on an international cruise line, you know, whatever. So I went on my cruise, but before the cruise, I was like, hey, I feel like we need a break. We really do. I'm not breaking up with you. I just feel like I really need space. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. These hiccups are horrible. Excuse me again. My Lord. Anyway, I was like, I feel like we need space. I need... I need some time from you, and after this, maybe we can figure something out. 
you know, but for right now, I want to go on my cruise, I want to enjoy myself, I want to take time to relax and have fun, and then when I get back, then we can talk. Well, even before this happened, he was hanging out with this girl, I don't even remember her name anymore, it started with a J, I think her name was Jaden, exactly like mine, or Jayla, whatever her name was, Jaden, Jayla, something like that. Anyway, point B. He decided that him and this girl were going to hang out and go to the mall. This is when we were having our big argument and we weren't talking to each other. So he decided he wanted to go hang out with her and he wanted to hang out with her and go somewhere. Well, one of the times he hung out, he hung out with her twice. One of the times he hung out with her, she was, they had went to like get food or whatever and then he was driving her home and she started feeling up on him and touching up on him and flirting with him and instead of doing like telling her to stop and dropping her off somewhere safe or calling her a ride an uber or something he continues to drive her home while she's still doing all this stuff to him and so he tells me about it and i'm already irritated with him because we were arguing but that even that made it more irritating so then I go on my cruise and this is where the big problems come in. So go on my cruise, right? I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying my vacation with my family because, you know, we never really get to bond like that because my parents are very busy and my sister, she, she does dance and a whole bunch of extracurricular activities at school. So now that we have a break and we get to go on vacation together, we're all enjoying each other's company. So then one of the days I am traveling, there only one person had Wi-Fi, but we could each get the Wi-Fi, but we had to take turns using the one Wi-Fi. So I got to use the Wi-Fi while my sis, my mom and dad had went to a dinner, and my sister went to hang out with people at the little children's club they have on the ship. So I'm in the room and I'm using the Wi-Fi just to catch up and see what I've missed, if anybody's called or texted me, whatever. And he called me and he's like, hey, I need to talk to you about something. I was like, okay, what is it? And he's like, you know what, never mind. We could just talk about it when I get home. When you, when you get home from the cruise, I'm like, well, now you're making me worried. Like, what is it? What do you want to talk about? And he's like, no, I really don't want to talk about it on the cruise ship. I'm like, you might as well tell me now. Cause like you waiting to tell me it's just gonna roughen up the blow. And so he texts me later on and he's like, oh, well, the thing I wanted to tell you was that I cheated on you. And I was like, you cheated on me? Okay. Now, at first I was like, you know what, okay. Things happen, whatever. We can try and move past it, whatever. I mean, he and I had a little a green uh, argument that happened between us in the beginning of our relationship so I can forgive him and we can start over like he did for me I can do it for him until he told me it was the same girl that he was riding in the car with I was like oh so it was her and not only that he had unprotected intercourse with her and he also didn't yeah so he didn't use protection and then later on she texted him and was like i may or may not be pregnant what are, are you kidding me are you serious so you did that too and then he took her out to the mall after that happened so i'm like okay so of course i'm gonna be pretty irritated you know hearing all of this and then the annoying part after that was I get back home and he's like you know maybe we can come over maybe we can talk about it whatever so I'm like fine let me hear him out even though I'm really ticked off with him then so he decides to talk to me then he gets up so first off I was already noticing how 
hesitant and distant he was acting, but also he kept doing things that were very, like, weird. Like, before, when he would have his phone, like, when we first got together, he wasn't as, like, sneaky with it. But, like, later on, after the incident that happened between me and him the first time, that was on my fault, he got more distant and sneaky. And so when I came back and we came to talk, like, he would be... He would have his phone, like, easy looking at messages and texts. And when I would look over, he would move the phone or he would turn it off or whatever. And so I was like, okay. Like, he would do that a while. For a while. He did that a while. And so I never really thought of an easing of it. But then when this happened, I was like, okay, that's a little strange. So then, you know, he was already, he was already very protective. Like, one of the times a while back when we first got together I was looking at pictures of us on his phone and I just happened to be scrolling through and there was a picture of his ex on there of him and her cuddling together and I was like why is this picture still here and he's like oh I never I forgot to delete it but there was more pictures of him and his exes so I was like what's going on here so that was a flag and didn't really think of anything of it until you know this so then I was like, oh, okay. So then one of his exes called him in the middle of us. We were about to start talking and one of his exes called and he hung up the phone. And I was like, why is she calling you? And he was like, she's been trying to get a hold of me, but I don't want to talk to her. I was like, okay. And then, you know, I, he got up to go do something. And he got up to go do something. And then... I just happened to see his call log and two of his exes were calling him and then there was these other numbers that were calling him. So I was like, okay, this is a little weird. So then he's sitting next to me and I'm looking through his text messages and whatever. And the girl that he did the stuff with, same one that was in the car with him before also, um... They had messages dating all the way back to January. So I was like, y'all have been talking since January? That's a problem. Like, that's a real problem. Y'all have been talking for months. And, like, they were being flirtatious with each other. At first it was friendly, then it started getting flirtatious. Then he started calling her boo and bae and baby and all this. And... She was like, so if I'm pregnant, she's like, I hope I'm pregnant and I hope it's yours. And she's like, you're going to be a great dad for the baby and stuff like that. And she was like, some, um, you know, uh, you know, your girlfriend is a real jerk. She doesn't deserve you, da, 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 whatever. And I was like, oh okay and the things he said about me were not even better like he was trash talking me to her he's like you're right i don't know why i'm with her da 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 like he was calling me the b word and he was like she's just the b word and she's a h-o-e and she doesn't deserve me and she sh and she should she does this and that and that and everything i'm just like so you've been talking to this girl for months and you're trash talking me to her and then it's not only her five other females he was talking to including two of his exes were also he was also trash talking and calling babe and baby and all this other stuff and whatever and i was like oh really okay and then one of the conversations really got me because the girl he had been messing around with i was going through the text and one of the texts said did she see the pictures of us? And I'm like, pictures? What pictures? And he's like, no, she didn't see him. There's no way she would see him. She's too done it up for that. Like, she ain't smart enough to see them. I hit him so she won't see him. She's like, good, because I don't want her to see any of the pictures of me in your room with you and da 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 da. I was like, oh. I was like, wow, okay. Okay. Wow, all right. So you didn't take you you didn't been talking and doing stuff with this girl for a while. Hmm. 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 
So I had just about had it, and luckily his mom and dad were about to take me home. So I went home, and then his guy friend, who's also friends with me, I called him up and told him everything that happened, right? And his guy friend was like, put him on the phone. You need to call him so we can talk to him, because I need to talk to him. And I know he ain't going to talk to me, so at least let me talk to him through your phone. So I was like, okay. So I called him up, and I was like, you know, why would you do these things? Why would you say these things? whatever and he was like trying to deny it deny it deny it until i finally got the truth out of him and he's like okay fine i did and he's like trying to tell me you know it's i'm sorry it's not like that you know you know how it is i was just really depressed this that other but i can understand being upset but it doesn't take you to that length it doesn't make you do all that now some of that you know what you were doing whatever blah 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 so I was very irritated about it weeks go by and he's trying to get me to come meet him hang out with him talk to him and we met up a few times and each time he would try to talk to me and convince me to get back with him but at that point I was just angry and upset with him and I didn't want to see him so then one of the times he takes me to go see his grandmother who's sick and I was like okay you know what he needs my support, I'll be there for him, whatever. Then he takes me and we go talk and he gets mad and he hits the door. He slams the door and gets an attitude with me because I don't want to really, because I'm telling him how I, like, I'm like, how would you feel if it was the reverse? If I did all this to you, would you want to forgive me? Would you want to get back with me? And he's like, no, but you know how it is though. I was depressed, this, that, and other. I'm like, but still though, you have to understand, if it was the reverse, you wouldn't have given me the time day. I'm sure of it. And if you had, it would have only been for a slim amount of time. So all that happened. Then he decides, oh, well, you know, we're gonna talk, whatever. And I'm like, so he decides, to drop me off at work because he's like I really want to drop you off at work I'm like fine really I just I didn't even want him to drop me off I wanted to just figure out but I didn't have a choice so he decides to drop me off right so I'm like okay whatever fine drop me off if, that, if that's what you're gonna do and we get up there and I'm like if you want me to get back with you you gotta make me trust you because at this point I don't know if I can trust you so I'm like, let me see your phone then. If you really want me to trust you, let me see your phone. And of course, I go through his phone and I see him, he's texting even more girls, different girls this time. He's still texting two of his exes and the other girl, but now he's texting different people now. So I'm like, okay, I, I don't know what you want me to do. I, I can't trust you, obviously. This, this isn't going to work. So that happened. And, um... He gets frustrated. So then weeks go by and he keeps trying to talk to me and it just doesn't work. So, you know, we call it quits and then I'm hearing from people that he started dating someone. And so I was like, wow, you didn't even give it the time of day. Like you just um, automatically right after we broke up, you just started dating somebody. Cause like after we broke up, somebody called me to tell me, oh, did you know he's dating somebody? I was like, we just broke up and he's already dating someone. Wow. Wow. So then it gets even more annoying because now he's trying to come up to some of my friends and hit on them and they were not having it. And then he tried to hit on his friend's ex-girlfriend, both of them. And I was like, wow, he's really, he's really doing it. And like the, the and like, it was great. So after that, you know, it was, it was wild. So after that, you know, he finally stopped doing stupid stuff for a while. And he's angry with me and he didn't want to talk to me and whatever. But at this point, I was over it. I was, I was going through the stages of grief. You know, I was at anger and I was at anger for a good minute before I finally, you know, did all this. 
I'm finally at acceptance. I've just finally moved past it and everything. I'm at that stage now. I finally moved past everything. But it was crazy because after all that happened, after all the craziness, you would think he'd finally stop, right? Dead wrong. Dead wrong. After all that happened, you know, him and his not friend, they aren't friends anymore, but the guy that's friends with me, they decided to hang out one day. And so I was talking to the friend on the phone. I was like, hey, so da 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 da, whatever. We were having a conversation. And then I hear this familiar voice in the background. I'm like, oh, you're hanging out with him, why? And he was like, because he asked me to hang out with him and go see a movie. I was like, oh, okay. I guess that's okay, whatever. But then me and, the, me and my ex got into an argument over the phone. And he started cussing me out and yelling at me and getting mad. And I got mad back. And things were said that shouldn't have been said, but it happened. And um, all that to say, you know, I tried. And then he would comment things on Snapchat and stuff saying that I'm a, a, a whore and that I was doing stuff that was this and that and that it was whatever. Like he was saying all these things about me and I didn't like that. I didn't appreciate it at all, you know? And having people come up and text me and call me and degrade me like that was so disrespectful and I didn't like it. And then having him say those things to me didn't make it any better. So ended up what happened was the fact that I tried to tell his mother about the things he did and that did not work to any avail because she does not like me, she does not trust me, she thinks that I am a guard too and all that other stuff so I was just like okay you know what I quit even you know his friends wanted to have a conversation with her I didn't put them in the conversation they said they wanted to be added in because they wanted to talk to her too about their own separate issues with him but apparently the mom took it a wrong way whatever she didn't like it and now she thinks that we're all bad mostly me and the other one me and the other guy point being it was a nightmare to deal with and then recently he came up to my job to give me a birthday present and caused a whole commotion at my job where I almost got, I could have gotten fired if the actual manager was there. But luckily, he wasn't. So, he brought flowers and candy in a, like, he brought an envelope, he brought candy, he brought flowers. Now, the, the envelope with a card and the candy was fine. The flowers were over the top. We're not dating anymore. So I think it's a little over the top. And then when I opened the car, there was a box. And in the box was a necklace with a J initial. So I was like, okay, that's fine. But then, later on, I opened the box, and there's a ring in the bottom. And I'm like, okay, we're not together anymore. We haven't been together for months. So why are you giving me a ring? And he's like, Alright, let me wrap this up because this story is getting pretty long. But, basically, you know, all that happened and it was really, really crazy, you know? Like, you just, it's unexpected. So, the fact that he showed up, brought flowers, brought a ring, it was over the top. And, you know, there is a person that I am with now. So, the fact that that happened when my boyfriend came up to work he was like why is your ex trying to give you stuff what is he doing blah 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 and i was just like i had no answer because i wasn't expecting a ring and flowers i was expecting him to bring like a card or whatever because he demanded he had to get it to me so i was like okay but i wasn't expecting all of that that was just you know over the top right like he was doing like too much like he did so much that a lot of my co-workers were ready to fight him like literally fight him because he was starting a bunch of drama at my workplace 
And then when I confronted him about it, he was like, oh, I'm not starting drama. It would have been your co-worker's fault if you had got fired. No, it wouldn't have, because you came up in there being over the top. Like, you came in there, and you decided you wanted to give me the stuff. I'm thinking you're going to get the stuff and leave. Then he stayed for an extra 20 to 30 minutes, and he, he claimed the reason he stayed is because his sister wanted to eat there, which was true, because I saw them eating. But then he kept looking all over the counters, behind the, the chair that he was sitting at, waiting on me to come out. Like, I'm working. I'm not about to come out there and sit with you. And he claimed that the reason he stayed there so long was because his sister wanted to see me and wanted me to sit with him. But I told him I had work at 5 o'clock, so why? You know, it's like 5.10 now. Why are you still sitting here? Then it gets to 5.25, saying he literally waited till my boyfriend showed up to get ready to leave. So then my one of, my assi- one of the assistant managers walked out to the car. I don't know what she said to him, but she said something. And he waited until my boyfriend and his mom walked through the door. And then after that happened, he left. So that happened. Then yesterday, literally yesterday, I got a text from him. He's sending me a picture of this post about MC H- Nipsey Hussle, pardon me if I mess that up, and about him and his wife and how they're soulmates, whatever, whatever, and even if something were to happen between them, don't move on, get back together with your soulmate because this, that, other, stuff like that. Anyway, he sent me that and I was like, why did you send me that? And he's like, you know what, never mind, you'll never understand. I was like, all I asked was, why did you send it to me? Why did you hit me up out of the blue? I haven't heard from you in months, and now all of a sudden, you want to send this to me. And he's like, because it reminded me of us, and I really want to be with you, and you just won't give me the time of day. And I'm like, that's not exactly true. Like, I told you what I wanted from you and you just kept being deceiving and then I would tell you constantly I need my space I need time to focus on me after we broke up I was like I need to focus on me I don't want to deal with what happened with us right now I don't want to deal with all that drama it's in the past I just want to move on and he won't let it go he's like stuck on it and he won't move on, he won't find a new girlfriend, like, he keeps ta- telling me, like, he's talking, he tells other people he's talking to people, but then he'll tell me, like, I can't talk to people because every time I do, I think about you and I just want to be with you. And I'm just like, okay, I don't know what to tell you, like, I just, I don't know what to say. And, like, then, I, someone sent me a recording of him talking to this girl that me and him both know. And he was talking to her and he was telling her, oh, you know, he's like, you know, my ex, uh, I was such a fool for being aware. I didn't really like her. Like, I really had a thing for you and that I really had a crush on you and then stuff like that. Like, he was saying stuff like that and he's like, I always wanted to have a relationship and try things with you. And she was like, well, why is this coming up now of all times? And it was just ridiculously crazy. It it was just so much. I just got that message a while back. But it was so much. It was just too much, too much, too much. Point being, this video is getting super long. So let me just end the video. So basically, guys, that is, in a nutshell, the crazy, drama-filled thing that happened with me and my ex and the reason why we broke up. But my feelings basically on this matter now is like, I don't have any resentment or hate towards him anymore. I did when we broke up because it hurt me, it broke my heart, and it took so much out of me. It really did. But I don't have any hate or resentment towards him anymore. I don't. At this point, it is what it is. I'm done with it. I'm moving on. I'm trying to... I'm, I have a job that I'm trying to get through. I'm about to go back to school to do my sophomore year in college. 
you know, I just had a birthday. I just turned 20 years old. So, like, I really don't have time for the drama anymore. I'm really just trying to move past it. I don't want to deal with it anymore. So, yeah. So, like, I have nothing bad to say about him at this point. I want him to live his life to the fullest as he can. I'm trying to live mine the way I want. I want to enjoy my life now with my boyfriend and my family and school and college. Mainly school and college is what I'm focused on right now. So, yeah, I, that is pretty much all I have to say on this matter. Um, but yeah, and my best friend, shout out to you, Treasure, because she had me listen to this song, and it's called Medicine. Uh, I don't know who it's by, but um, I'll try to see if I can put a link to the song below, or I'll put a picture of it when the screen changes. One of the two, I'll figure out a way. But that song really helped me through my breakup. And I have really great friends who decided to stick around and help me through it. It's been months now since we broke up because we broke up around April-ish. April, May, April, probably May. We broke up right before our anniversary. We would have been, we would have been together for a whole year in May. But we broke up right before it in about April so at the tail end of April so yeah but if you guys like this video you know you can give me a like um, subscribe if you're new uh, comment what you want to see next if you like story time tell me what other story time things you want to hear or if you want any advice let me know and I'll do an advice video about breakups and stuff um, and yeah I will see you guys in my next video.